you just saw a few clips from my smartphone granola bar b-roll. I'm gonna show you my process for filming it, and then at the end of the video, you'll see the final sequence. I'm about to make raspberry granola bars. It's a recipe I've been making since I was a kid, and I'm really excited to film it using only my smartphone. For the first shot, I want to introduce the jar of raspberry jam. I'll be using my Samsung Galaxy S10 to film. For light, I want a soft look, so I'm bouncing the light from this light stick so it diffuses and spreads and creates soft light. You can see the difference in the shadows here. I think the softer look is much more pleasant for a food video. I'm filming most of the footage in 4K for flexibility in post. With this clip of the butter and sugar, I like two parts of it. So I'm turning one clip into two by zooming into the second one. One of the hardest parts about getting phone footage is keeping it stable. So when I get the opportunity, I am using a tripod. If I want camera movements, I can brace the tripod against the surface and slide it across or use my elbow to slide for smoother motion than I would if I were just holding it in my hand. The key is using your environment to get the most out of the opportunities you have. The next couple shots I'm filming at 240 frames per second. When filming slow motion, my thought process is to ask myself, does the action in the shot justify the use of slow-mo? If yes, then I choose a speed based on how I imagine it'll look. In this case, 240 frames per second, to play back at 10% speed. Next clip, I'm also filming at 240, and I now have about 30 different moments to choose from where the flower is in midair. I'm choosing this one specifically because it is the only one with a big flower burst underneath and the framing was very good. You'll notice I repeat my camera movements at least a few times. Sometimes I'll only have one chance to get it right, but most often I can try it a bunch of times and pick the one I like the most. Next, I'm including a wider shot for variety, although this is technically a medium tight shot. The reason I'm filming mostly close-ups in this video is because that's where my phone excels, in the macro close-up range. But I still need to add variety so the video isn't only super tight. The moment I cut between these two shots is specifically when the whisk is in the right position to lead to the next clip. This is called a match cut, and it helps the edit feel more seamless. The next shot is mixing the wet and dry ingredients, and it's honestly feeling a little static to me. I don't think I planned it out very well, so I'm going to turn it into a fast cut with a zoom over all three clips. The next few shots are pretty self-explanatory, but then the moment I was waiting for, the star ingredient the raspberry jam. This is the first shot with the jam, a pretty simple one. Now I'm gonna do the from below shot. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I typically film through glass when I do this, and that is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm gonna find a spot on the glass where there's not anything funky going on. Do I use the super wide? I think I use the super wide but is that gonna look really bad? This is one of the most exciting parts of the video, so I need to come up with something that matches that excitement. My idea is to pour jam on the camera using this super wide lens, and then use the color red for a fun transition. The jam doesn't fill the frame quickly like I thought it would, so I'm cutting ahead in time to hide that and go straight to the full screen. The transition is all done in After Effects, I'm taking the last frame and zooming it out alongside the next clip. Then I extend the edges using a motion tile effect and feather them to blend it in. Matching the color red and adding motion blur helps it look more seamless. 
The motion blur also hides the pixelation from zooming in too far. This is the transition slowed down. And this is the final speed. The spreading jam shot from the transition is another time when I repeat my motions over and over and then pick one that I like. So here I'm using what I was talking about earlier in using the tripod to brace against the edge of the counter in order to get extra stability. Now I'm adding the cinnamon and I'm hoping to get that poof. I really like cinnamon, so I have no reservations dumping a lot of it into the topping mix here. This is an example of just trying something and seeing what happens. The sugar looked even cooler than I thought it would. I then tried it at 240 frames a second, but it didn't look as good as 60. You can also see the quality is much lower, so I'm trying to use 240 FPS only when I really need to. Now for a shot of me mixing the topper. I'm using my elbow locked against my body to minimize the shake, but it's still not enough. Here, a little stabilizer goes a long way. For almost all the video, I'm filming in manual focus, but it's most important here, because otherwise the autofocus would get confused by my fingers. Many of the angles I film don't make the final cut, like this one. Throughout the whole video, I filmed about 30 minutes of total footage for a 45 second sequence. A one second piece of this sprinkling right here becomes what I use in the final video. As I'm putting the rest of the streusel topping on, I get an idea. The shape of the glass pan strikes me as beautiful, so I decide to film through it. This isn't something I would normally do because it blurs and distorts the image, but here I think it looks really cool. These two shots are both sliding to the right, but the first one is a lot slower than the second one, which means I probably should have matched the speed when I filmed them to make it feel like one continuous motion. I can still make it more smooth in the edit by adding a transform to speed up the first one and then hiding the cut. It's a subtle edit, but I think it makes a big difference. Here is a comparison. Now I'm going to get a shot of moving the pan into the light. The idea being that once the timer has gone off, time has passed and I'm using light to show that. Kind of like how the sun moves across the sky, except I'm doing it artificially and hopefully it evokes that idea that time has now passed and it's not just one instant later. As soon as I get the bars out of the oven, I want to start filming so I can get the bubbliness of the jam around the edges. I think this is my favorite shot of the video so far because of the bubbles. In the edit, all it needs is stabilization and color. Next, I get a wide shot of the pan. This will go before the other shot, but I'm filming out of order because I needed to get the close up of the bubbles first. Now I'm going to film myself cutting the raspberry bars and what I want is to have a solid chop down and up hopefully with a bunch of gooey raspberry jam. Okay, so I didn't get the amount of jam I wanted, so I think I'm going to spread some jam on the knife. This is officially what I would call cheating. So now I'm on to the last two shots. It's been a bit hard to get a solid bar out of them because these tend to run a little bit crumbly and I also probably did something wrong. I think I might have spilled a little or something happened while filming. So I've done my best to make a rectangular bar that I'm now going to film the last two shots on, which are just showing the final product. 
I'm now filming the wide shot, which I think shows how little movements can go a long way. First, I fix the color. This is the natural camera motion of the shot, which is pretty subtle. I'm adding a slow zoom to this. Even though it's slight, I think it makes a big impact and adds a dynamic feeling to the shot. Now onto the close-up. I'm doing a similar camera motion as I just did, so I can cut between the shots if I want to. This is the raw footage. This is the color edit where I fixed white balance and contrast. And this is the final shot with some stabilization added. Now that everything's filmed, you get to see the full final B-roll sequence. Here it is. <laughs> 